Tip number one, unsocketing gems can be really expensive. For instance, if I went on socket this, it would be 62,000 gold, which is more than the gold of the item itself is even worth. However, if you actually salvage the item instead, then what will happen is you will get your gem back for free. Number two, because some of the Paragon rare nodes require a high amount of raw stats, for instance, I need 360 intelligence, I only have 317. One of the most important things to do to get stronger is collect all of the Altar of Lilith. Each Altar of Lilith will actually give you a raw stat, like plus two dexterity, plus five strength, even some of them give you plus one Paragon point. So for that reason, even though it's a big chore, collecting all the Altar of Liliths will give you a massive power spike. The mount unlocks at the beginning of Act 4, after you do the quest Dawn of Inn's Favor. So for that reason, the Altar of Liliths are very easily acquired after getting the mount. And because it's flat stats, like Strength, Intelligence, Willpower, Dexterity, no matter when you choose to get them, you get the same amount of power, meaning since that power is linear, it's stronger earlier, because everything you do after achieving that power will be ramped up, for that reason, I got the Altar of Lilith near the beginning, right after getting the horse. A common thing I see is people not understanding uniques you can wear multiple of. You do not have to only have one unique at a time. I'm wearing one, two, three. You can wear as many uniques as you can equip, essentially. Look, I can put on even a fourth unique. So they are not one per character. There's a lot of things you can actually swap during combat. You can even swap equipment during combat. So that way, if you are maybe being attacked by a boss that hits multiple times, you want to put on your thorns equipment or something like that. Just as an example, I've done this myself, nor the cheese and kill bosses instantly. You can also swap spirit boons literally in the middle of combat. So I could swap my heal for additional damage if I wanted. And then once I just need the heal, I can swap it back. So just keep in mind, you can actually basically alter your build while you're in combat, including switching things like skill trees, what have you. Keep in mind, you cannot add skills. If you add a skill on another skill that has a cooldown, you try min-max swap it out like that, it, the skill you've just added will retain the cooldown of that slot. So you can't do that anymore like you could in the betas. Helltide areas will have chests that you can open after farming the materials from killing monsters. These materials are these ones, the cinders, and at 75, you can actually open one of these chests, which will drop an item only based upon the chest you choose to open. For instance, this one here is chest armor. So if I had a chest armor piece I was really looking for, I'd open that one, but they're all around the map. You can see them. There's a weapon one over there, for instance. So if you're trying to target farm a specific item for a certain slot that you have that's just not very good and you want to replace it, consider farming in the Hell Tides. You'll also need the Fiend Rose material for enchanting, upgrading, etc. And for that reason, you're going to want to farm that from the Hell Tide as they are very rare. While you're farming in the open world in a party, you can actually share experience, but the person that's near you needs to be about three or four screens at a maximum far away. Any farther away and they're not gonna get experience, but actually in a dungeon, this is different, which is why the current meta strategy that everyone is imploring in order to hit level 100 is everyone join a dungeon and farm separately in separate areas. But just keep in mind that if you're in town, you're not gonna get experience or anything if your buddy's farming in the overworld, you gotta keep kind of near each other. Overworld events is where you're going to get your drops for oboes. So if you're trying to do your gambos and you want these murmuring oboes, for instance, then you're going to get these from doing the actual overworld farming of the events like I'm doing right here. Now the event has been completed. There is a chest. I can open up the chest and just like that, murmuring oboes. You can increase your max capacity of these oboes by doing the Renown system, but overall you should be working towards completing your Renown. Not only do you get two skill points per for a total of 10 more skill points, which are highly important, but you get Paragon points for when you complete each region. That's 20 Paragon points, which is the equivalent of five levels. So effectively people at level 100, once they have these, will have the total Paragon points of level 105 if they've also done their Renown. So it's very important. In order to get Renown, part of the things you need to do is dungeons. You can tell if you've done a dungeon already by the ones that have the chest, mean there's still an aspect that you can unlock from the dungeons. The Codex of Power aspects that you acquire are all permanent, meaning you can use them as many times as you want, but the stats on these always have a base stat 
of the lowest possible row of these stats. So these are always the least of these, but you can do them as many times as you want. You can also click on an aspect if you want to unlock it and it will pin it on the map, meaning you can see the line exactly where it is in order, look at that, it's up here all the way. So now I know if I wanted that one, I would have to come here in order to get that aspect. So if you're looking through in your theory crafting, you wanna know where to get it, just click on the aspect and it will take you essentially right to it. Enchanting rares to re-row their stats. For instance, if I wanted to re-row the were were, uh, bear or the werewolf or the willpower is significantly cheaper on rare items than it is on legendary items. So for this reason, if you don't want to spend it on the fiend roses, what you can do is you can actually farm rare items, re-row it until you get exactly the stat you want, then you can put your aspect on it to make it a legendary item. Each different tier of legendary costs a different amount to extract. For instance, normal legendary, look at that, 71,000. Now, if I go put a sacred in there, once 135. Now, if I put an ancestral, once 430,000. So for this reason, I save all your normal legendaries because extracting it is actually cheaper than trying to extract the higher tier ones. So later on in the game, you can actually use these normal legendary aspects on even ancestral pieces. So this is a way to once again, save resources. For instance, here's an ancestro, but here's a normal aspect. Look at that, we can actually imprint it and it only costs 66,000. Upgrading gear is super important. Not only is it gonna increase your damage per second base stat on your weapon, but they also increase your secondary stats. So look at this, 4.7% damage increase for damage to close enemies, 3.5% on slowed, 4% on basic, 4% on stun. And you can see it costs 60,000 plus material salvaged from other items. So for this reason, Upgrading is very important, but then at the last here, you need the Helltide Forgotten Souls. This is just like the theme roses for enchanting. These are rarer resources and come from the Helltides, and that is required to go to the maximum tier of upgrades. For that reason, Helltides are even doubly as important. When it comes to salvaging, if it has the little mining icon next to it, that means there is a cosmetic item that you have not salvaged yet. Salvaging an item will open up that in your wardrobe. You can see transmog unlocked and you can go to the wardrobe located on your map in order to see the new transmog you've unlocked. We have extracted the new chest plate and we can see it right here to take a look what it looks like. Right there, I think was the new one. What do you think? Does it look all right? The red circle will let you know which one you currently have equipped, but you can see all of the different transmogs that you have equipped, and you can see when some of these you have not yet unlocked. You can see that the world boss is about to begin. If you look on the map and see this diamond looking thing, you can put your mouse over it. It'll tell you how many minutes until the boss actually shows up. These bosses will give you legendary items and you can see it says weekly bonus claimed. There's an additional cash that you get for doing it once per week for each boss. So that's three of them. While leveling, you definitely want to use potions. The potions last for 30 minutes and last beyond death. They give you bonuses, but more importantly, they give you bonus experience of 5%. This should work for everything. So while you're grinding, it is extremely important to keep potions up at all time if you're trying to push. These can be crafted at the alchemist and they will require you to use the materials that you find along the floor as you're walking throughout the overworld map. For instance, these are herbs. So you're gonna to want to pick them up when you see flowers, et cetera, while you're walking around the world. You can also upgrade your potion as you hit different leveling tiers. This will increase not the percentage of how strong the potion is, but how much you instantly heal. So don't forget to go upgrade your healing potions. Speaking of potions, renown is once again important as your potion capacity is actually increased by doing your renown. So you can see there's a five additional potion capacity. Since world, or not world bosses, but since bosses and things like the campaign, dungeons, etc., very often will lock you in the dungeon, whereas a hardcore you can't leave and yes, you, unless you use some kind of mechanic to get out of the fight. Uh, having potion capacity increase will help you win the battle of attrition. There's even a stat on leg pieces, though I don't have one to show you right now, that will give you a plus bonus amount of potion capacity, so you can really get up to a lot of them. You can right click on the map anywhere to drop a pin, so if you wanna find your way to a local dungeon from where you're at, you can drop the pin and look on your mini map, and this will help guide you to your location. 
you can get free cosmetics for your horse and on the ground, it's not obvious. It looks something like this, so don't forget to pick it up. But even if you don't pick it up and you leave the dungeon or something perhaps, or like you kill the goblin and drop one, it will still show up in your, your uh, stash, just like legendary items you leave behind. However, there's a limit of 10 items that can be stored here. So don't let it expire beyond the 10 items. You could lose a free cosmetic. In the main town, in most of the main towns, there are portals for everybody in your party. If you click on the portal, you will teleport exactly to them, just like banners in Diablo 3. For this reason, you can join a friend's party who already has the waypoints around the map, have him go to a waypoint, then teleport to him, and unlock all the waypoints at the map right at the beginning of the game in order to increase your leveling speed if you're starting later than one of your friends. Once you have beat the campaign and played through the game, even on a softcore character, if you choose to create a new character, I'm gonna show you this whole process. Let's just create a new character here, finalize. There you go. I can do a hardcore and skip the campaign. So you can play on softcore, get through the campaign, and then just make a hardcore if you don't want to have to get stuck playing this story. If you enjoyed any of these tips or learned anything new, consider giving me a thumb up in exchange or subscribe to see more of these. I've been playing a lot. I've slept like 10 hours since the release of the game and I've been making a lot of videos on this channel doing the best I can to inform you. So there will be more. Love you all. Have a great day.